All right, good morning, everybody. Let's begin worship at the fonts. Does someone want to help me with communion today? Is someone feeling moved by the Spirit? Matt, and does someone want to light the Advent candle? Jack, you want to do it? That's great. We'll do it during the Gloria. I will, I'll, I'll, I'll make an announcement and invite you up. Let's begin with confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A voice cries out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. So let us listen and turn to the Lord in penitence and in faith. O Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for all of your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In the tender compassion of Jesus Christ, dear beloved, your sins are forgiven. For God's covenant is eternal, and God's blessing rests upon us all. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we're spending a little bit of time doing the small catechism together. We're going to end the Ten Commandments because I was getting tired of it. We're going to skip the rest of them. Uh, this, is, this is the first article of the Apostles' Creed. It says, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. What does this mean? And Luther says, I believe God has created me together with all that exists. God has given me and still preserves my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all limbs and senses, reason, and all mental faculties. In addition, God daily and abundantly provides shoes and clothing. Shoes is like number one on this list. Food and drink, house and farm, spouse and children, field, livestock, and all property, along with all necessities and nourishment for this body and life. So one way, he's talking about creation here, right? One way we often think about creation is it was something that God did in the past, and at some point it was sort of done. There were the mythical seven days, and then after that, God said, it's over, and put it up on the wall. Sometimes we imagine creation as a work of art. I just grabbed this off my desk. Do you have a painting in here? Yeah, there's a painting. It's, creation is like a painting. God worked on it for a while. God said, it's done, and it's over. If you go to a museum and there's a painting on the wall, the painting is done, right? The artist does not go back in and add something to it or go, well, I had another idea. Maybe I'll go put in another person or something. This is not how creation works. Creation is an ongoing thing, as Luther talks about. So if you want a way to think about creation as a work of art, think about creation as not a painting, but a song. It's something that's always going on. When Unju leads a song with us, what would happen if Unju decided to stop singing? Well, we would stop singing, and there would be no more music, right? If a, if a Monet painting is on the wall, and Monet decides to stop painting, what happens? The painting's still there, right? Because Monet's dead. But creation, God is always creating, God is always choosing to will us into creation, to being not just us, but all those gifts that Luther talked about. So this is a way to think about creation as something that exists, not just in the past, but even today, right now, as we gather together as God's people. That's it. Uh, who's reading? We're going to do Isaiah today. Bill? Excellent. Isaiah and second, first Peter. The first reading is from Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with, with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. 
His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 2 Peter, the third chapter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dis dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. John proclaimed, the one who's more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I am baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We're spending a little bit of time this Advent season putting the readings for each Sunday in conversation with an important but obscure voice from Christian history. 
So last week, if you were here, we talked about Isaiah and Mark's uh, ideas about paying attention and Simone Weil's ideas about paying attention. And this week, I want to introduce you to another woman who is a contemporary of Weil's. Her name is Madeline Delbrell. Has anyone heard of Delbrell before? No? Good. Okay. You're going to love her. She's the best. Delbrell grew up in France in the early 20th century. And since the French Revolution, France had been a predominantly secular country. Her social circle was mostly atheists and agnostics, people who had no use for organized religion in any way. In her early life, she was very much a product of this environment. When she was studying at the Sorbonne, she summed up her religious views in one of her diaries like this. She said, God is dead, long live death. So she was not involved in campus ministry when she was a kid. <laughs> When she was about 20, though, her close-knit social circle started unraveling. Her fiancé, who was going to marry her, decided to join a Dominican order instead. Her parents got divorced and were estranged. Her family sort of fell apart. And she returned to the question of God that she long ago set aside. Looking back on her conversion experience, she wrote, quote, By reading and reflecting, I found God. But by praying, I believe that God found me and that he's living reality, and we can love God the same way we love a person. And after her conversion, she went back to her old neighborhood and set up a hospitality house where she advocated for worker rights, provided food and housing and clothing for people. If you know Dorothy Day, Dorothy Day in New York City, very famous. She's doing the same thing, but in Paris, basically. And this is where I think her story goes from being admirable to revelatory for us because there's a debate happening within the church at this point about how to witness in society, particularly to people claiming allegiance to these other narratives and identities. So think about the neighborhood that Del Brell grew up in, in which people are antagonistic toward the church. The gospel is irrelevant, meaningless, we'd be better off without it. What posture should the church take? What message should we be focused on proclaiming to these people? This is also what the prophet wonders in today's reading from Isaiah. The people have just been deported away to Babylon, and the prophet is called a witness. A voice, cry, a voice says, cry out. And the prophet says, well, what shall I cry? What am I going to say to these people? The people are like grass, their constancy like the flower of the field. In other words, what new word is going to bring these people back to life? Those are the same questions people were asking in Del Brell's time, and they're the same questions that we may find ourselves asking too. Even if we live in a different context, more apathetic than antagonistic, we may find ourselves wondering what it is we're supposed to proclaim and how it is we're supposed to live as God's people. One answer people come up with is that we should just repeat church teaching in a louder voice. If people aren't listening to us, it's probably because they didn't hear us. Incidentally, we had an example of this a couple of weeks ago. We celebrated Christ the King Sunday. Do you remember this? Christ the King Sunday exists because Pope Pius XI is like, people don't think Jesus is the king anymore. And so I'm going to put a day on the calendar when we say Jesus is the king, and that's really going to show people that Jesus is the king. <laughs> Del Brell looks at this and says, that is not going to do anything for people who are not already in the pews on Sunday. Instead of just repeating ourselves in a louder voice, we need to actually listen to people. We need to understand what's going on in their lives and why they find these other narratives so compelling. And only after we do all that can we convey why following Jesus makes a difference in our lives. In other words, we can't just tell people, no, don't do that. We need to say yes. Here's a vision of what life in the body of Christ actually looks like. To put it another way, this is a thought experiment. If people knew nothing about God, nothing about Jesus, nothing about Christian practice, other than their encounters with us, what would they say about God? Would they say that God is judgmental and insecure, that God is self-interested and exclusionary? Or would they say that God is forgiving and generous, that God is caring and available? Delbrell, Delbrell's big insight is that it wasn't enough to just tell people about what God was like. 
but the Spirit empowers us to show people what God is like. We, like John the Baptist in today's Gospel reading, invite people to repentance, to a different way of life, to a way of life ordered in the mercy of God. And for Del Brill, the hospitality house was a way of offering that vision within her neighborhood. We don't just tell people that God loves people, we love people. We don't just tell people that God cares for the hungry, but we care for the hungry. And we don't just tell people that God forgives, but we forgive. We can't create faith in other people, but we can show them the difference that the love of God makes in our lives. And this is exactly how God instructs the prophet Isaiah to serve. The prophet says, what should I say to these people? And God replies, well, get you up to a high mountain. Lift up your voice with strength and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. We, Del Brill would say lay people in particular, are commissioned just like the prophet Isaiah to bring God's love into the world. Not just to tell people this is what God is like, but to show people here is what God is like. This is how Del Brill describes this in one of her books. This is long, but I'm going to read it because it's better than what I'm going to write. This is imagining... I tried this last night. It didn't work. We'll try it with you. What, is, what does a missionary do? They spread the gospel. And where do they go? Out. Out. They go from France to Africa, from France to Asia, from France to Latin America. Del Brell's big idea is that you don't need to go to Africa or Asia or Latin America anymore to be a missionary. You can be a missionary in your neighborhood. And this is how she describes this in one of her books. She says, from a sand dune dressed in white, the traditional missionary overlooks an expanse of lands filled with unbaptized people. But from the top of a long subway staircase, dressed in an ordinary suit or raincoat, we, the ordinary people, overlook on each step during this busy rush hour time an expanse of heads, bustling heads waiting for the door to open. Lord, Lord, my eyes, my hands, my mouth are yours. The sad lady in front of me, here is my mouth for you to smile at her. This child so pale, he's almost gray. Here are my eyes for you to gaze at him. This man so tired, so weary. Here is my body so that you may give him my seat. The smug young man so dull and so hard. Here is my heart so that you may love him more strongly than he has ever been loved before. Delbrell offers her life to God and in offering it to God, she offers it to her neighbors. And it's the exact same for us. Whenever we celebrate the Eucharist, we offer our thanks and praise to God and declare to God saying, here is my life. So that sent forth from Christ's table, we can join Isaiah and Del Brell in the entire communion of saints and say, here is our God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Let's join together with the church around the world as we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came. <laughs> was incarnate, made truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite the assembly to sit or kneel for the reading of today's prayers. With hope and expectation, <clears throat> we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Send forth your faithful people with words of promise and forgiveness. Teach your church to be bold in revealing your good news in word and deed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Reveal your majesty in mountain peaks, flowing rivers, and blossoming wilderness roads. Heal the earth where it longs for renewal. Bring wholeness to the earth and all its creatures. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Turn the hearts of the nations toward righteousness and peace. Increase cooperation for justice between countries, commonwealths, political parties, and diplomatic leaders. In times of prosperity, direct leaders to be generous for the sake of all. We pray especially this week for the people of Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Comfort your people with tender words of love and healing. Surround all who are grieving, all who know depression or anxiety, or all who feel lonely or forgotten. Be a steadfast presence when all else feels uncertain. If you have any additional petitions, I invite you to offer them at this time in your hearts loud. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Grant patience to all who are waiting the season. Give hope to those seeking employment. Bring reassurance to people awaiting new diagnoses or treatments. Protect expectant parents. Watch with those who keep bedside vigil. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With you, a thousand years is like a day. Bless the memory of the saints from ages past and the anticipation of saints yet to be born. Inspire us to live with faith as we await your new heaven and new earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Listen to these and all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you.
Let us pray. The green, green ones scattered on the fields, and the grapes, ones dispersed on the hillside, are now united on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The whole Lord be he with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Praise you, ever living and loving God, that you have sent your Son to this world. For Christ is your wisdom, ordering all creation, our lawgiver burning with justice, the branch of Jesse's tree sprouting flowers from old roots, and the key of David opening our prison doors. We praise you, ever serving and saving God, that you send your Son to this table, who on the night before he died took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to all his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We beg you, ever mighty and merciful God, to send us the spirit of your Son. Dwell in this food and all who share it, that the earth may rejoice in your presence. 
In Christ, the dawning day enlightened our darkened world. Reign as sovereign to unite all peoples and live among us as Emmanuel. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, with your Father and Spirit to the church and receive our praises now and forever. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
ever-living God, you have shared this meal with the saints and the whole household of God. When the fullness of your peace is revealed, may we gather people of every race, language, and way of life to share in the one eternal banquet of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. I invite you to have a seat for the announcements. Just We have more than usual this time of the year. Does anyone have anything they want to share? Any announcements? Yes, Unju. So this coming Saturday, my group, this coming Saturday, we are doing a concert. It's a group called Jesus Radio. It's a very cool Yeah, great. Thank you, Unju. We look forward to that. I didn't see anybody else. I just have a couple things. Uh, Godly Play, we're going to meet in the library. We're going to make Christmas decorations, do Christmas stuff today. Uh, you got an email from me this Friday, probably. People have been scamming people again, pretending to be me, texting people. If you ever get something like that, ignore it. Ask me if you're not sure. It's This happens to everybody. It's nothing about us. It's just part of being church right now, unfortunately. Uh, and then the last thing is on the way out, you'll see we have signups for the flower fund for Christmas and for worship signups. The flower fund, it used to be that you would like buy a plant. We've done it differently the past few years where you're just invited to make a contribution, any amount you feel is fit to your means and submit a dedication. Uh, Christmas day, you can take a flower home. And if you want to sign up, hello, I know, hello. If you want to sign up to be a worship leader on Christmas, you can do that too. That's great. Jack did such a good job with the Advent wreath. I might sign Jack up as an acolyte for uh, Christmas Eve. So please take a look at that. That's all I have. I invite you to stand and receive the blessing. With love and compassion, come, Lord Jesus. With judgment and mercy, come, Lord Jesus. In power and glory, Come, Lord Jesus, in wisdom and in truth. Come, Lord Jesus. May God bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. of our Savior, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you, man.